bug swarms, space slugs, brains on legs, mad imperial scientists. Zack has had enough. He's glad to be on board the luxury space yacht, Star of Empire, where at last there's peace and quiet. Until... Abandon ship! Critical meltdown! As the blaring siren sounds, panic-stricken passengers rush to get off the ship. Everyone evacuates, except Zack and Tash. But to their relief, nothing happens. There's no meltdown, no explosion. Everything is fine. Except that the ship's exits are sealed and all communications have been shut down. Zack and Tash are trapped, and they are not alone. Hello, younglings, and welcome back to the Padawan Library of Fear. <laughs> that's that's right. It's Galaxy of Fear Month here in the library, children. And, uh, of course, I'm Junior Jedi Librarian Levi Paratic. With me, as always, Junior Jedi Librarian Tim May. Hello, everybody. And this week, we will be uh, reviewing the very spooky uh, Galaxy of Fear number nine, the Doomsday Ship by John by John Whitman, yes, yes. and so we'll be getting to that. So yeah, but you know, I was thinking about it. You know, I haven't been having like a spooky October. Like I'm not one of those people, even mm-hmm. though all my friends are those people. <laughs> you know, I just watched <laughs> what I watched, but I did watch a spooky movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few days ago, in the new uh, Adam Sandler Netflix comedy, Hubie Halloween. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've, I've gone on a great journey with the Sandman my whole life. Mm-hmm. Sometimes with utter disgust, other times true reverence. This is somewhere in the middle. It's fine. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, you know, like, it was actually, like, just pretty funny. He plays, like, a goofy character. Mm-hmm. So that's always fun. I always prefer when he does that to playing just, like, a generic guy. Uh, and mm-hmm. um, some very funny cameos. I won't spoil one of them because one of them is truly insane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. See, now now I'm interested in this film. It's like, only, like, 90 minutes. It's not, like, a chore by any means. Well, like, and, and this is the movie he promised to make if he didn't get nominated for no. uh, Cut Gems. No. No, that's no. not it? Okay. <laughs> that would be uh, whatever the next one is. Okay. This movie was shot before that before Uncut Gems came out. I okay, I got it. Oh, wow. Well, I have a... Well, it was I have only a, a year ago. It's not like... Oh, that's true. I do have a Sandman story. Uh. So, um... You you partially know this story. So, friend of the show, Brooke, uh, who was uh, he was on the first Galaxy of Fear episode way back last October. Uh, his his dad used to own a video store, and when we were in college, I did a small documentary about the video store oh, yeah. and the video yeah. store existing at the present day, which sadly the video store doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. But one of the questions I asked them was, "What still rents?" Oh. Their response was. Anything with Adam Sandler in it. it. He said it didn't have to be didn't have to be anything at all. As long as Adam Sandler was in it, it would rent. And while we were filming, two high school girls came in, and they rented Jack and Jill. Yes, his, one so, of his last theatrical movies. Yeah. So I uh, I asked them, you know, what is it about Adam Sandler? And the girls were just like, I don't know. He's really funny. Agreed. So, Jump forward to this week. I was at Goodwill, 
Yeah. I'm walking around, and there's these two teenage girls. They're going through the CDs, and I hear one of them go, Look! An Adam Sandler CD! So I think the Sandman is still, like, cool with the kids. Like, the kids, oh, yeah, kids still love, love him. him. Kids love him. Also... <laughs> That's crazy that there were two teenage girls looking through CDs. I know, That is insane. (laughs) I thought I was the only person who still bought CDs at all. It's their record, I guess. Like, their vinyl record at this point. CDs are better than vinyl. Come at me, losers. (laughs) Guess what? Like, go ahead and buy, like, fucking, you know, fucking 36 Chambers on vinyl. That'll sound great, that record, you know, that came out in 1993 that no one listened to on vinyl in the first 15 years of its existence. <laughs> fucking nonsense. Will, a lot of those late 90s vinyl, nobody, there's, there was no point because they were out well, on Well, now CD they just press tape. these new editions and they just take the CD master and put them onto a record and it sounds like shit. Like, whatever. I... I have no patience for <laughs> vinyl purist losers. Don't get me wrong, uh, like, you know, there are some records, if you have a great sound system, it's fine, but, like, guess what, a CD is a CD is a CD. So if you have, like, just an okay sound system, it'll sound good still. Whereas if you just just an okay sound system, you need a great sound system for a record to sound, like, anywhere close to its best. Like... And most of these losers, especially people our age and younger, I'm talking about mostly, (laughs) these losers that buy records, they have, like, a shitty, like, fucking, like, combo turntable. They don't have good speakers. Yeah, they're just computer speakers, usually, that they they put on there. Basically, and they pretend like it's, like, so much more advanced. It's like, whatever. I don't have... Like, listen, I'm all about physical media. I love love CDs, but, like, if... you know, whatever. I don't have the patience for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I have a whole well, stack of records, by the way, so if people want to come at me, like, it's fine. <laughs> like, I like, you know, the, the, it's not that, like, I'm. I, it's not that I'm against listening to records. It's just, like, the, when people act like it's, like, this vastly superior, especially for records, for albums that came out, like, not in the vinyl era, Mm-hmm. I find it so dubious the way people talk about those records. Like, it's one thing to go and, like, listen to, like, fucking, I don't know, the first Crosby, Stills, and Nash record on vinyl. Like, that's at least replicating an, like, a, an experience with the record. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I get the idea. Um, but, like, and I'm talking about people that don't have, like, incredible sound systems. Obviously, if you have a great sound system, then whatever. Any of these are fine, basically. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. It's just tiresome. Anyway, so before we review this next Galaxy of Fear book, uh, we were going to talk a little bit about Galaxy of Fear. We, we, we're doing a casting of, uh, fan, uh-huh. fan casting, the main cast mm-hmm. of Galaxy of Fear, um, as if we were doing it in the late 90s. Right. I specifically took on the challenge that it would have to, it was going to be all people. From shows that aired on the WB. Okay, all right. That's my own personal <laughs> challenge that I okay. took on. And I'm even that... doing... Next week we're going to cast... Recast the original trilogy characters that have appeared in Galaxy of Fear with people from that era also. And I'm still sticking to the WB. So okay. that one's... Beca- that's been a bit challenging. But, uh, but we got a week to hold off on that one, so... Yep. Um, um, which characters are we doing? Okay. So we're going to do Uncle Hool, uh, uh, Tash, Zach, DV, even though he's cast out so quickly. The actor was just like, I'm done with this show. I can't do it. Right. And then, um, and uh, Bog. Okay. Borgamous Bog. That sounds good. All right. So, (laughs) all right. Let's start with Gog. Wait, no, let's not okay. start with God. Let's start let's start with the with the brother and sister. So okay. let's start with Tash, All right. main character. All right. Really. So this was a these were the to me the two hardest characters to cast okay. because I, they're children. I aged them up to teenagers. Okay. Because All of right. my my WB thing, like there's no children on the WB. Or else I would have to do like Michelle Trachtenberg. And then, like... That's, that's on my list. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> and I couldn't think of any, like, boy kids, like... So, 
Anyway. Well, mine mine aren't contained to the WB. However, my casting of Tash was totally screwed up because I like I picked three people like who could be Tash, but they're all brunettes and in the first chapter of this book we read this week, it says that Tash is blonde and I was just like, "Huh? <laughs> who cares? There's hair dye. That's fine." So, all right. Well, since we've already m- mentioned, I picked uh, Michelle Trachtenberg, of course, from uh, Pete and Pete fame, Harriet the Spy fame, Euro Trip fame, and most importantly, Buffy the Vampire. So it fits. Side. That would fit my thing. Although, no, oh, she shows up in season five, so still on the WB. I was like, maybe she was only in the UPN seasons. Couldn't remember. Anyway, uh, so regardless, uh, all right. So for mine, I was. I, Again, I aged up the characters. I decided they're going to be teenagers. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. So I went. I was picking between two people, but I think I I find I, I I've decided. Uh, Rory Gilmore herself, Alexis oh. Bell, is playing. <laughs> She's all Tash isn't really deserving of Rory Gilmore in my view, but uh, I'm <laughs> I'm going with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, she's, she's great, one of my favorite, uh... She, she's, she's been, she, uh, not a huge part in The Handmaid's Tale Season 1, but pretty darn good, so... Oh, yeah, she's, well. yeah, and she was on Mad Men, too, and, uh, um, Who was she in Mad Men? She was the woman that Pete had the affair with in Season 5. Oh, classic Pete. And, uh, they actually wound up getting married, the two of them. He would also qualify if I, if I... Wait, oh, those shit. Two are married Wait. in real life? Okay. Yeah, they're married in real life. I shouldn't say anything else. Because I know the, the married couple is going to play brother and sister, if you know what I mean. All right, so Zach will be played by Vincent Carthizer. Uh, he was... Uh, he played... Uh, what's the guy's name on Angel? Uh, oh, uh, His, it was... Uh, I'm blanking. Oh, God oh, damn it. Man, this is embarrassing. Not... This is so embarrassing. Uh, oh, I'm gonna have to look it up. Wait, no, no. Um, like ah, angels. Connor. Angel Connor. 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 That's it. All right. Connor. God damn it! That's embarrassing. Connor from Angel. <laughs> Vincent Carthizer, also known as Pete Campbell from Mad Men. He will be playing <laughs> Zach. <laughs> in my... And in the late '90s, he was in Another Day in Paradise, uh, which is a pretty good movie. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. Now I picked uh, I picked an actor who uh, I, he was he was see at the time he got his big start in uh, the probably the early two thousands with a Disney show and then of course he later blew up has had some ups and downs but I think he's at a safe spot in his career right now. Mm. That's right. I'm talking about none other than Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> overshooting your shot on this one i feel like what, what do you mean by that it's just like too good <laughs> i don't love shia i'm not like one of these shia like fanboys or anything but like mm-hmm. you know and i mean then again i love pete campbell like great performance yeah. so whatever well this mind. would be pre, this would be like a pre even steven pre shia yeah i guess though. so yeah mm-hmm. so like freaks so- and geeks Shiloh, Shiloh yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Oh, Fair. I never thought of. Freaks I didn't even Geeks think of like... Freaks and Geeks, but that, that wasn't on the WB, so I couldn't choose it. <laughs> okay, so All let's right. go with Uncle Hull. I think I th- you might know I, where I'm going. with I this I think one. I know where you're going with this. I did pick another actor because I had an idea of where you were going with this. So you okay. go first. Okay, uh, Rupert Giles himself, Anthony Stewart Head from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Damn right. This incredible, good... incredible cast on my part, I have to say. <laughs> is, um, <laughs> just a masterful casting. I don't know what else to say. All right. I'm going to make a photo of, like, a, a slide, sh- like, a, a photo set of all the characters that we've cast, and it's mm-hmm. so funny that, like, three of them are going to be, like, Buffy characters. <laughs> Oh, is there another one? I, Alexis well, I said Bordell? Michelle Trachtenberg for, oh, right, for Tash, right, so right. yeah. So uh, I picked another actor for uh, for him, since I knew you were going for Giles. Uh, I went with, because uh, I, I have a casting for Gog where I think these two actors would be like good together, because they're mm. kind of similar. Okay. And uh, so for Hool, I picked Alan Thicke, the dad from Growing Pains. I know who Alan Thicke is. Uh-huh. That's, he might be a little old at that point. But yeah, like no, that 
He's not too old or anything, but yeah, right. like I, no, that's cool. Alan Thicke. Uh, he was also in a movie that always bothered me as a kid, mm. and I can't remember the name of it, but basically it's about a bunch, like two kids, their dad dies, they build a robot, and then their dad inhabits the robot. Oh, that sounds familiar, actually. <laughs> It's, it always creeped me out. That's a so weird. No, it's like it's like that Michael Keaton movie, Jack Frost. Jack Frost. Like, fuck you. Yeah, exactly. That's what I say to that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the same idea, basically. Um, anyway, yeah. So I. Uh, all right, let's go to Gog then, because okay. I'm still thinking about DV. Uh, do you have a Gog, or do you want? I do have this? a Gog. I with my Gog, I went with. John O'Hurley, Mr. J. Peterman yes. himself, <laughs> because I think he's got a great voice, and I think he would be just like a he, perfect he, like imperial. Like he'd be great. Yeah, that's actually really good. Uh, family Feud legend. Mm-hmm. Of course. <laughs> I, I don't know if he's a legend. I think he only hosted for like a year. Anyway, um, all right. Uh, mine is good. people are gonna be like. I thought you were doing all WB actors, and you're going to be confused when you hear this name, but I promise you, <laughs> he was on the WB, and that is Michael York. Uh, you might know Michael York from Logan's Run, of course. Right, and uh, Austin Powers. Yes, but my- Michael York, however, also <laughs> played a uh, college professor in Gilmore Girls who <laughs> had an affair with Paris. Uh, like an old and and died, like literally dies, and she has to like. It's so funny. Anyway, uh, um, so uh, uh, yeah, I'm going with. I don't remember the character's name, but um, yeah, I'm I'm going with Michael York. I feel like Michael York and uh, Anthony Stewart Head would be fun together. Two middle aged Britishmen. That that would be really yeah. fun together. Just like how I think uh, Alan Thicke and uh, John yeah, O'Hurley would absolutely. like be would be good together. So, all right. So our final character that we're going to cast oh, is, is of course a, is a voice DV. role, basically, right? It's a vo- well, see, it's a voice role. But I also figured, well, what if we got a tall, skinny guy to like put the costume? And on? It's a guy. You would, did, would you say it's a guy? Yeah. I would say DV's a guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've ne- never thought differently, okay. but I went with. A tall actor with a silly voice. That's right. Third Rock from the Sun fame. French Stewart is who I picked for for TV, aka Inspector Gadget Two. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> oh god damn it. Okay, so I don't want it to be all Buffy and Gilmore Girls. I got to pick someone from another show. What about Seventh Heaven? I didn't watch that. Um. I guess I gotta um, think about Dawson's Creek, but I'm trying. Well, to you could also you could also do um, like an animated show if you're doing like a voice actor. You yeah, but they have to have been on the WB. Was an uh, Animaniacs on the WB? I'm, uh, that's kids WB. <laughs> I, I'm talking about the WB. You know, the, okay, the, the all classic. Right, all era. right, <laughs> all right. So, all right. I mean, yeah, because I got an idea right in my head. From uh, Gilmore Girls, but I f- feel like Gilmore Girls has been pretty heavily represented so far. Because, um, yeah, well. Okay. Um, oh, oh. Um, I'm going to go with Kerr Smith, who played Jack on Dawson's Creek. There you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> He was also, I think, in the first Final Destination movies. You you would recognize him if you saw him. Okay, all right. Um, But yeah, no. uh, Yeah, Kerr Smith. Uh, Jack, uh, the first uh, gay character on the WB. Oh, wow. Uh, Pretty landmark uh, episodes. And um, pretty good performance, although the character becomes kind of silly later on when he becomes like a frat boy in college. like, Like, and like... Yeah, I don't know. It, it's <laughs> you know he becomes like really dumb all of a sudden. They make him into a really dumb guy, which I think was interesting. Whatever, Dawson's Creek. Uh, there will be more to talk about with Dawson's Creek next week when we do the. I, I'm, I, I think I have a growing suspicion <laughs> as to who who your Luke Skywalker is. So. <laughs> do you? Do you? I don't know. Hmm. Um, the only other person I considered from Dawson's Creek for any of these roles was 
I was thinking Gog, I might go with uh, John Wesley Shipp, who played Mitch Leary, Dawson's dad on Dawson's Creek. And I only wanted to bring him up because I have to tell the audience how Dawson's dad dies on Dawson's Creek. Do you know this? No, I don't. All right, so this... The, the, he, it's the beginning of season five, um, and he gets into a car accident. You think on his face, reasonable, fine. Mm-hmm. But he's pissed off at Dawson about something, so he goes out driving, he goes out to get an ice cream cone. Okay? Okay. And he he's driving along, licking his ice cream cone, and the ice cream falls off the cone, okay? Into the, like, you know, it, it, like onto the floor of the car. And he's driving, at, it, it's pitch dark, pitch black, and he decides, I can't let that ice cream just melt down there. I have to try to p- scoop it up with my cone. And so he's distracted from the road, <laughs> scooping up the ice cream with his cone, and he gets hit by, by a car, and he dies. And then the next step, and then, you know, uh, play James Taylor, Fire and Rain, and, you know, cry, cry your eyes out. But this is the thing. They did not have the balls to make him, like, be drunk or something. Right. And, it's... like, because clearly that's the idea, I think. But it's, like, so funny. I laugh about it. I think about it at least once a week, and I chuckle to myself. <laughs> I'm not joking. I love it. Oh, my God. Go check that episode out, guys. It's, like, right oh. near the beginning of season five. I don't know where wow. it's streaming these days, but check it out. But, uh, you know, there's still one show from the WB still on air today. Wait. Yeah, Supernatural. Yep, that's Which it. Which started in, a... in the last year of the WB. It barely counts. I don't really... Right, right. And it's in its final And by season. the way, the one guy, Sam, will always be Dean from Gilmore Girls to me. Like, <laughs> and the fact that his brother on the show is named Dean is so confusing. <laughs> um, whatever, yeah. So... I know that they like they like had to shut down production right before they shot the series finale, didn't they? Uh, I think so. Yeah, so yeah. crazy. I, I assume they're going back sometime in the, this fall and, and finishing it. But that is so funny. I think <laughs> it's, it's been on for fifteen years. Fifteen it's years. It's the longest so running, long. longest running genre TV show of all time. Mm-hmm. It, so yeah. now, before we go any further, I have another Galaxy of Fear related story. So you know how I've been venting about how expensive this book has been on eBay? Yes. $130, basically. So, and this week I had to read the book online. I was kind of annoyed about it at first, but in the end, wasn't so bad. Kind of enjoyed it. Didn't mind it at all. Read it on my phone, woke up every morning, did that instead of sitting on social media. It was great. All right. So I'm on eBay looking for shits and giggles. And wouldn't you believe it, a whole... So for the same price, $130 for the just the Doomsday ship, somebody listed the entire series for $130. Oh, my God. Buy it and now? It had, a, it, it had to make an offer on it. So I made an offer, and like I could type you... When you typed in numbers, it would tell you if the number was too low. So I found out the number was 100 So I made an offer of $100. I got it. Paid for it with my PayPal credit. I got six months to pay on it. So now what I have to do is get the books, pull out the Doomsday Ship so I can complete my collection, and then I need to hawk all of the other books on eBay to make my money back. So that is my plot. Wild uh, stuff. Well, should, a lot of them are worth, a, like a decent amount the, of them are worth yeah, a lot. Yeah, the next book we're reading, Clones, the lowest it's on eBay for is $40 right now. So... Uh, Crazy. So yeah, I, th- I think it's gonna be all right because at like a hundred dollars each book is like eight dollars a piece, and it's like if I can pay eight dollars for the Doomsday Ship, I'm all right with that. So yeah, I I haven't I bought. Just, I just to be honest with you, I've been collection. reading almost all of these uh, digitally and not legally because they're not available that way. Right. Um, which is unfortunate, um, but they. Uh, it's it's been fine, you know. It is what it is. I read through this one quick. It only took me like oh. ninety minutes to get through this. We'll talk about it. Yeah, um, I read through this one real fast too. So so yeah. Anyway, um, that was our cast. We're, next week we're gonna cast. Um, we're gonna cast Luke, Han, mm-hmm. Leia. Do we want to do three PO and R two? 
Yeah, and we should do Chewie as well. And Chewie, and I want to do Dash Rendar, who appears in this book. Okay, all right. I'll write I have that down. one of the funniest possible ideas for Dash Rendar. And again, I'm going <laughs> still all WB. <laughs> you are going to be blown away because you know this person. You don't even know this person is on the WB. I guarantee it. Like you're going <laughs> because you would know this person from something else, and okay. you're going to be shocked that they were on the WB. Okay. Uh, and who they played is going to be so good. Anyway, so okay. next week we're doing that. We need to stretch and this content out, baby. We do need to stretch this content out because we still have two more weeks of Fear Month. I do want to say, though, Anthony Daniels, he got offered the role in the late 90s. They were like, hey, Tony, do you want to play C-3PO again? And he's just like, nope, I'm not doing it. And then years later, of course, they're like, Anthony Daniels, do you have any regrets? And he's just like, oh. Galaxy of Fear. I should have done Galaxy of Fear, so... Damn it, Tony. <laughs> All right, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll figure out who can possibly replace Anthony Daniels next week, but this week we are going to uh, talk about Galaxy of Fear number 10, the Doomsday Ship, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Padawan Library. I'm Tim May, here as always with Levi Paratic. Dark greetings. Dark greetings. So, this week, back to Galaxy Fear yet again for the second week of Fear Month. Fear. <laughs> um, fear. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, the tenth book in the series. We're nearing the finish line here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the Doomsday Two more. Sh- yes. The Doomsday Ship. We were very down last week on... Last I want to I want to talk I want to talk about this because we yeah. were really down yeah. on last week's book and we gave it a 3 midi chlorian maybe a little which, low a little low yeah. <laughs> cuz that would put it like on the lines of like boba fett and like rise of the resistance join and, the like, resistance join the resistance and both of the, it's like better than I know those. It's better than those, so put an asterisk next to it if you're keeping track at home. Yeah, if you're maintaining the Padawan Library uh, wiki, uh, <laughs> we all know someone is, uh, <laughs> then you might want to adjust that. I, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe up to 4.5-ish. Somewhere I'll, put it at, I'll put it straight at 5, because here's the thing. Mm. <clears throat> I think we were, it's, it's a fine book on its own. We were just coming off of Last of the Jedi, and I think we were just annoyed that it felt just like another formulaic uh, uh, Galaxy of Fear episode. So, yeah. I mean, I, I would say this week, too, like, because we're... It feels like there's no story left to Galaxy of Fear. Like, there's no arc to Galaxy of Fear. They we're wrapped just it on up Mon- and God died, yeah. Right, we're on Monster of the Week episodes at this point, so that's that's what we're doing at this point. So, but uh, this book I felt like changed it up a little bit, so because our Beastie is a little different than our previous Beasties. Mm. So, yeah, uh, the actual Beastie part of the book I could have done without, uh, but we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> so, we uh, another thing, and we'll get into this because it'll be introduced, but I figure we can talk about it up front. This mm-hmm. book. Instead of original trilogy character, it features uh, Dash Rendar from Shadows of the Empire. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Dash Rendar is a fun character to talk about because obviously he's a huge part of Shadows of the Empire, which was obviously a novel and a video game and and comics. It was a huge multimedia project. It was a practice run for how they were going to market the prequels. That is Mm -hmm. why it happened. I actually have the making of Shadows of the Empire book. I don't know if you've ever read that. I haven't. I would like to read that um, sometime, though. Actually, really interesting, because they talk about it. It's like, it, it was just like, we're going to do a novelization, a kid's novelization, a video game, all the stuff we would do to tie in to a movie, just no movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, very cool. Dash Rendar was also the hip new character. He looked like a 90s comic book character. Had, mm-hmm. like, vests. Shoulder pads. Shoulder pads. Yep. Pouches, etc. Um, he was and like, he's also the he's the playable character of the video game. Yeah, yes. so. and uh, he uh, and he was uh, and he was super cool. He was like a cooler Han Solo, even cooler, you know. Uh, not <laughs> really, nin- but he was the '90s Han Solo. Basically, uh, like if, that's... if Han if Han was made in the '90s, that would be Dash Rendar. And so. what's interesting is that Dash Rendar was popular. Like mm-hmm. people liked him. 
star of a very popular video game and like pretty iconic like 90s EU character. Mm-hmm. He did not appear. He, well, okay, he's in this book, which came out in 98, so that's two years after Shadows. Right. Um, he did not appear in a non-Shadows of the Empire related thing, which those were all in 96, and maybe the, the comics might have bled into 97 or something. Mm-hmm. But And then there was this book, which comes out in 98. He did not appear again until a novel very near the end of the Legends era, which mm-hmm. is uh, Shadow Games... Uh, which I think came out in like 2011, 2012. Some... Where's it? What? Uh, we're in the. T- it takes the, place uh, before the... the original trilogy. Oh, I should mention he's also in the last book in the Han Solo trilogy. The not the Brian Daly book, obviously the the AC Crispin mm-hmm. Han Solo trilogy. He's in that, okay. and that, but that comes out right around Shadows time. So like, mm-hmm. he did not appear at, since between Galaxy of Fear number ten in like ninety eight. In like 2012, 20, I don't remember exactly when Shadow mm-hmm. Games came out, but Shadow Games is like in between the trilogies, basically. And I remember I read that book, I remember nothing about it. I bought it <laughs> and read it, and I remember thinking, you know, okay, Dash is in here. But Dash Rendar, like, think about all the other EU guy characters from that era, and all of them mm-hmm. kept showing up in books through the 2000s. Yep. For some reason, people are just like, oh, we don't need to use Dash Rendar. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't get that either. I know the, I know the video game. Unless you, the video game ends unless you beat it on the highest difficulty. It ends with Dash, like you don't know his fate. You think he presumably dies. Whereas if you beat the game on the highest difficulty, there's an extra cutscene that shows him flying the Outrider, flying away. The Outrider is cool, by the, the way. Cool the Outrider is cool. There was an Outrider, like, you could get the Outrider. Mm-hmm. Like, it was an actual toy. Like, so it, it makes no yeah, sense. Yeah, they did an action that, like, figure line for Shadows, too. Like, they did everything. Yes, of course. They did everything. They did... It was like a movie came out. Well, what I always liked about the way they did it was, like, so you had the book, which was from the hero's perspective, but then the comic book, like, was, ha- most of the comic book was from Boba Fett's right. perspective, and Boba Fett's journey from, you know... And the game like, is Pot obviously City Dash. To... Yep, the game the is Dash. The junior novelization is was... just a shitty version of the... Exactly. We might, mm-hmm. I was thinking maybe we could do the junior novelization of Shadows. I think we should. I have it. I so have I it, think too, we should so do I it. thought it might be a fun thing to do because i would love to talk deep i would love to go deep on shadows like i could read through the making of well, book and i would love to do a full episode about it well if we we also have to see how like the junior novelization approaches like uh zizor trying to seduce leia so. oh my god yeah <laughs> prince she- even i feel like even prince shizor was in other stuff or at least black sun was right but, like, right and he showed up eventually in clone wars right I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's way later. which is which? Why? How did Dash Rendar not show up? How did Dash Rendar not show up in Rebels? Like he, yeah. he's like he seems like such an well, obvious yeah. like uh, Legends character. And you to, like, have bring back. like certain. You have lots of nods to Legends stuff in Rebels too. Like tons mm-hmm. of it actually. Tie interceptors right. and all kinds of crazy shit. So anyway, now now I will say this. I do know this. The boy is currently kind of canon. I, I know, and, I I glanced, because I was wanted to confirm that there was nothing in that period, mm-hmm. so I, could, I glanced at his Wikipedia page, and I was just on the Legends tab, but I saw there was a canon tab, and I was like, where does he show up in canon? So, when Solo came out, a book came out, it's, kind, it's almost like a weird storybook, it's not quite like a kid's book, but it's not quite a junior novel, <laughs> it's called Tales from Vandor. Vandor is, of course, the planet where we meet Lando playing Sabacc at near the beginning. Well, not the beginning of the film, the second act of the film. And <clears throat> the idea is the book is being told from like the bartender of the place, and he's like telling stories of that like he's heard. Classic so, like, new canon style book. It, it's it's written by Jason Fry, who of course wrote the novelization of Last, uh, Jedi. Uh, Last Jedi. And he's he, uh, he's been around forever. He's, he wrote. Yeah, a lot he of also them. he also wrote the Rebel series, Servants of the Empire, which we're going to read. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, Dash Rendar shows up in that book. Uh, there's uh, they also allude to uh, uh, Han Solo at Star's End oh. being possibly canon in that. Because... You know that's like my favorite Star Wars book, probably. 
Han Solo blows up a building and launches it into orbit. Like, yeah. that's like, like how cool is that? So like, cool. I, uh, <laughs> the Brian Daly Han Solo Adventures books. That's like, to, I, this is my hottest like take when it comes to Star Wars Expanded Universe. Mm-hmm. The early stuff is the best stuff. I'm talking like the Marvel comics, the Brian Daly Han Solo trilogy. I actually really like the Lando Calrissian trilogy. I I, I want to read those, those for sure. Those are all awesome. Splinter of the Mind's Eye, less so. Yeah, that it's was, an interesting, that was always... interesting curio, but nothing. But all that other stuff, like from the late seventies, early eighties, is just awesome. It has like a totally different vibe than anything from later, but it still well, feels it feels so much like the original movie. That's the mm-hmm. thing, like because like. Once that Empire does sort of redefine Star Wars in a, in a lot of ways, because the original Star Wars is much more like fast paced and uh, swashbuckling, you know what I mean? And like, mm-hmm. just, uh, and like, not that there's not space opera elements, but the operatic stuff has really ratcheted up in, in, Empire. in Empire, which is awesome. And it's what, it's what gives the whole series the weight and everything. So I'm not like, mad at it but like every book from the like early 90s when they came back on tries to have that kind of weight not all of them but a lot of them do and Mm -hmm. like that early stuff it's just like let's just do fun adventures like that was the whole thing and the adventures are super fun like the marvel comic book series and like listen who knows what the future of this podcast is when it's done, but the only thing that's even stuck around as maybe a possibility for continuing would be that. The issue by right. issue, as it would take up, take so much, it would take so much less time, so that's really why, but an issue by issue breakdown mm-hmm. of that series. So th- that's not impossible, although we would definitely take a long break. We'll see. We would. Uh, but, yeah, the, uh, we would. but regardless, I just wanted to point that out that, like, um, it's just a. Uh, I, that so and the 90s expanded universe was like what was in the air when I was a kid so I love that stuff um, but there's plenty of good stuff all the way through and even now I'm not I I talked I, I made a little snide comment earlier about this collection you're talking about the, <laughs> but I, I, that even it sounds kind of cool honestly I'm not actually against it it, it just seems like they do lots of anthologies now but they don't feel like they have the weight of like no. the '90s anthologies. No, with the total like like with the name Tales from Vandor, you're thinking like Tales from Mos Eisley Cantina or Tales from Jabba's Palace, and it's not that at all. But it, it's interesting because it mentions Dash, it mentions the events of Star's End, it also mentions Chewbacca's family in it as well. So like it was really just like an excuse for Jason Fry to be like, I'm going to try to make these things canon again. We got a so. Life Day mention in this book that we. Yes, we do have a life day mention. All right, in this well, book, let's get so. into the book. We've been talking long enough about <laughs> everything but the book. There's not a lot to talk about here. Again, like I actually, no. I, I had a much better time with this book, and I enjoyed myself more. Like we're going to be a lot more positive, I think. But mm-hmm. there's still not that much to talk about because th- basically, no. um, uh, who wants to get the kids to Dantooine? They're heading to Dantooine because yes. that's apparently out of reach of the Empire. Um, even though, like, they know that's where a former rebel base was at this point. Like, right. I'm not sure mm-hmm. it would not be being supervised by the Empire. <laughs> but whatever. So they're in the dance wing, but in order to do that, they, they dock on this luxury cruise liner called the Star of Empire. And which is an independent... It's, it sounds like it would be controlled by the Empire, right. but it's an independent cruise liner. It's, pri- it's privately owned. Privately yep, owned. They, they... Um, and so... Zach is beat. He's like, I'm tired of adventures. I just want to chill. I don't want to be around any humans. I just want to be around machines, baby. Machines. Mm-hmm. That's what he wants. So, uh, <laughs> and so he, he uh, is looking around at like how the ship works and all this shit. And it turns out, uh, and and he and he he gets he, he meets this guy. What's this guy's name? Malik. Malik. He meets this guy Malik, who's like. Just an engineer or something, and like a computer technician kind of character. And so. so he's like, "Oh, teach me how to do some bullshit on the ship." And and Malik's like, "Why don't you press this sequence of numbers or, or buttons or whatever?" 
and and Zach does it, and it shuts all systems on the ship down. And this guy's like, "Got him!" Like he's so <laughs> like, <laughs> and so uh, and like then the captain comes and is like, "Oh, don't mind this doofus engineer. He's just like a shithead. He's like some imperial governor's like cousin or something. We had to hire mm-hmm. him to like keep them off our back. Don't worry about it. Like, why don't you go back to your quarters? Maybe I'll uh, I'll show you around later." So he goes back to the quarters, and who's there but Dash Rendar? Dash Rendar is right there outside, the, talking to Tash, and he's like, "Who? Like Tash befriending strange people again? What's going on?" And then like Tash is like, "Oh no! Like him and Hul were talking about something," and he's like, "Oh, another adventure." Oh, Zach is just not <laughs> into it, and so Zach goes back, and so. Um, I actually I blanked on what happens next. You pick up. Okay, <laughs> so so one so one of the things that's going on is so the captain of the ship, Captain Haig, H A J J, Captain Haig, yeah. uh, he gives for some weird reason gives Zach access to like the computer on his computer in his room, and the oh, because he wants to learn about how the ship works. Right, and the computer is run by uh, smarter an AI, child basically. Yes. Do you remember uh, Smarter it's... Child? No, I don't. <sighs> okay. Well, describe what this is first. Okay. So the <laughs> ship is the ship is run by a program called the Sims. Sim. Uh, actually, it's just it's called just, Sim. It's, yeah. it's just a, it's just. But a, a it's Sim. basically it's an AI program, and you can talk with it via text. I yes. would reference Smarter Child because uh, did you use like AOL Instant Messenger as a kid? Yes, I did. There was a bot on AOL Instant Messenger called Smarter Child that was like a fake person that you could talk to and it was like terror it was like horrible it, like, <laughs> right. like it's like Siri like minus a thousand like it's like <laughs> it's the same kind of thing um, and it's not like it's gotten that much better really like mm-hmm. but it's that kind of thing and uh, it was like in the early 2000s like so very long time ago and uh, me and uh, my brother and like a bunch of people a bunch of our friends used to uh, make like huge fake conversations with it, and like save the conversations. It was it was a wild time. So this just reminded me of Smarter Child. That's all. Mm-hmm. While you were talking about Smarter Child, I looked over because I wrote down your list of casting for the show, mm. and I'm looking. Oh, Michael York! Michael York was in Clone Wars. He was. He was. He plays the doctor who creates the blue shadow virus. <laughs> uh, he does this. He does this real uh, crazy voice. So anyway, Zach's talking to the computer. The computer wants to play games with him. He's like, "Oh, video games? Hell yeah!" And this is where suddenly the excuse me, uh, hollow games. Hollow games. Sorry, but this takes on a very. This book feels like a cross between War Games and Two Thousand One. Uh, so, very. Yeah, very much so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so basically, he plays this game with the computer, Sim, and then it he loses, and then all of a sudden, the whole ship shuts down, and they said there's going to be, uh, and a voice comes on, there's going to be an, uh, a, like an engine meltdown. That and basically, they have to evacuate. So everybody's mm-hmm. running to evacuate. Hool winds up getting off somehow. They, they lose track of Hool. Well... Well, here's what happens. They're getting on the escape pod. Tash and Zach look out after they hear a woman shouting, My child! My child! <laughs> and, like, they see the child, they see the mother, and they're like, We gotta go! So, like, they go, they get the child, they reunite him, get him on the escape pod, and then somehow Tash and Zach end up getting shut into a closet, and the door locks behind them. And when they get out... Everybody's gone, including Uncle Hul. Like all the escape pods are jettisoned, and like they are alone on the ship. So uh, they're alone on the ship, and until they realize that Dash Rendar also mm-hmm. wound up getting stuck on the ship, so they team up with him. Zach hates Dash already. He's like, I don't trust this guy, and he's like, I'm gonna go talk to the computer because I like the computers. I like computers more than real people, you know. He's mm-hmm. like that kind of little shit, you know. And, He's uh, such a little I, shit. I, I, hate, I hate Zach. That's why I cast fucking Pete Campbell as him. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, um, and I hate Connor more than Pete Campbell, actually. Connor from <laughs> Angel Jesus. But Connor is the worst. So bad. That season oh, is terrible. Oh, <laughs> my God. The whole Cordelia storyline. Oh, so is terrible. So devastating. And, okay, I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, like, dude, why are you bringing that up? <laughs> Good Lord, I forgot about that. Okay, so they, um, what was it? Uh, what was he, uh,. Zach. Oh, so Dash, Zach goes. Yeah. Zach doesn't trust Dash Rendar, and this is confirmed for him when he talks to Sim, the computer. And Sim's just like, "You shouldn't trust Dash Rendar. He has a criminal history. Like, I don't trust this guy. Like, you shouldn't trust him either." And he doesn't automatically throw. They also run into the captain of the ship, who's still there with some of his boys. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, th- eventually, Zach's like, "I'm gonna throw uh, Dash Rendar under the bus." Because the, the computer told me he's bad. And uh, so he, he tells the captain, and the captain confiscates Dash's blaster. and uh, But Dash is very cooperative. He's like, whatever. You know, mm-hmm. he's just like hard as fuck the whole time. Uh, <laughs> and, well, and then, so from here, yeah. the book is basically trying to get, uh, out, get, get out. Trying to get out of the ship, and they just hit one thing after another. Uh, on the cover of the book, it shows the children being attacked by scary-looking droids. These are apparently gardening droids from the ship's The fact menagerie. that the gardening droids were supposed to be so threatening, and they kept calling them gardening droids, was very... I funny. know, I know. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I was <laughs> expecting, like, a ship full of robots, and said they were gardening droids. Because the cover, they seem so scary on the cover of this book. Yeah. Um, so they go through that. Uh, they go through this Tower of Terror scenario where an elevator's <laughs> dropping out. They climb. They start climbing ladders, and like droids are throwing parts at the top. So I wrote in my notes, I have Tower of Terror and shoots and ladders. <laughs> uh, so I was, and then um... it, and then the captain, like the captain and his crew, they all die. That's like one of the things that happens. And then so they're trying to get to like the comm center. And Sim, the computer, keeps telling uh, Zach, you need to get to the control room. Only you need to come to the control room. So, like, you need to get here now. And he keeps telling everybody, like, hey, the computer's telling me the control room. And everybody's like, nah, I'm it's not too listening far, to the computer. too far, like, get out of here. And they were right. Shouldn't listen to the computer, because then the computer immediately, almost at that moment, he gets to the control room, and then he's just like, thank you for freeing me, Zach. And he, like, turns up the heat. Does all kinds of crazy <laughs> shit, and he's like, just like I, he's like I like killing people. He basically says this yeah. at one point, and so he goes to try to save Tash. He's trapped. Um, his sister Tash, Tash Dash, got a little mm-hmm. confusing here, uh, and so they are able to do it, um, and they wind up getting. Uh, Oh, did we tell the thing about how Dash Rendar, like, there was a hole in the hull, and, like... Dad, no, and Dad, no, oh, that scene just, rules, actually. Yeah, it's awesome, and <laughs> there's a hole punctured in the hull of the ship, and, like, so everybody, and, like, one of the captain's lackeys, like, flies out, a droid flies out, like, the droid actually, like, kills themselves, because the droid has been taken over by Sim, and he's, like, right. he blows up. Into the like hull and creates a huge hole, which is like a crazy scene. And so then, <laughs> um, and then like it winds up sucking out one of one of the captain's assistants. And Zach's like, "I got a great idea," but then like Dash Render's already doing it, and obviously yeah, Zach would have yeah, failed miserably if he there's tried like it. a piece of the floor pulling up. So like Dash just like grabs whatever it. he's holding on to, he he dashes off what he's holding on to, grabs the floor, and as he's being sucked out, he peels the floor up and takes the piece of the floor and puts it on the hole of the the hall and it saves everybody yeah it's just like this huge heroic moment that happened before we knew what the um that the sim was evil so coming back to when sim was evil they're able to escape basically hool shows up hool had transformed into a minox so he could survive in space Mm -hmm. so and he he, he's like he's just chilling in space like wonder where my wonder where my niece and nephew are what's going on here and then he winds up coming back in and uh so they all uh basically escape together they have to like outwit um sim and they're able to get back to the shroud 
and Dash Rendar's like, I'm no, I gotta go grab the Outlander. Like I'm, like my ship's too fucking cool to let it die here. So like I'll mm-hmm. I'll see you guys later. So he runs somehow, makes it to the Outlander, and like blows a fucking hole, another hole in the hole, and is just, like he's just like, and he like says to them like, what was it? It's like uh, it's so fucking cool. He says like, uh, he's like, let me get the door or something. <laughs> for you and so they, they all fly out and Dash it's... Rendar destroys the ship okay mm-hmm. and uh, he flies off he's just like and so they're headed I guess to Dantooine from there and um well oh, don't forget cause they, they ask him before they part over the com or we're like well Dash why were you there in the first place you never told us and oh, he goes he's like oh yeah my plan was to steal the ship <laughs> <laughs> crazy so um yeah no classic dash uh <laughs> yeah no and then basically there's a dumb cliffhanger where like sim is still alive and like that there yeah sim in... sim uploads itself to the hollow net and becomes and this like... is by the way sim is like an evil program the empire is using like it's a it's a it's like a version of a weapon where it can take over any ship right so except it except it seems like it's out of the empire's control at this point right. like it's it's so self-aware but basically, yeah, it's that cliffhanger where it's like, oh, this thing could come back. It's but, never going to yeah, come back. Yeah, there's only two books left. I, I thought, I don't want to say it was a cop-out, but, like, I didn't like that they don't actually, like, defeat Sim. All they do is escape Sim. So, yeah, I wasn't in love with that. I will say, I enjoyed that this book was, like, very focused. Mm-hmm. In a way that sometimes these books aren't. Not just Galaxy of Fear, but any of these kinds of books. Mm-hmm. Like... Once we figured out what the goal was, like, we just ran through to the end. Like, it, it felt, it was a very quick read. Like, mm-hmm. the digital copy we it, that we read yep. said there were 188 pages. And obviously, like, the pages are smaller and it's not, like, actually that many. But I, like, like even last week I read the same kind of digital copy and it was 170 pages. And I was like, this is longer than last week? No! <laughs> and so, I, uh, but I, I ran through it, no problem. It took, like, 90 minutes to read. It was crazy. I, so, I actually enjoyed this. It's not, like, in terms of the context of the series, I don't think it's all that, like, it's certainly not monumental or interesting on that level. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was, like, a kind of a fun adventure. I, I'm going to be pretty generous. I'm going to go with, like, a 7 out of 10 here. Okay. I was gonna go with a six. Yeah. I think the best part of this book is Dash Rendar. Dash yeah, and Rendar he's awesome. is like Dash he Rendar makes rules. the book. It's so yeah. weird that he was so underused. Maybe they and, were and, like, and, maybe maybe they just thought like, well, we used it. He was like the guy for an entire like publishing line. Like, so they wanted to right. give him a rest. I get that, but it's like for fifteen years, like, it seems crazy. To me. <laughs> I think it's like I think John Whitman does a, a great job at keeping him cool. Like, there's nothing about Dash Rendar in this book that... And not like we know Dash all that well, no. like he's been in so little, but, like, he maintains a, a keeping him cool you know, for the series. The mystique series, is so. totally intact. Right. Um, yeah. And the only other thing about this book that I would say I didn't like was, like, so, okay, we're trying to get to the hangar, we're trying... Like, it knows where it's going, but I feel like we had one too many, like, beasties battles... Because oh, wait, had, yeah, I didn't like In that. the Menagerie, they battle the robot, the gardening droid. Also, Zach then, is such a dipshit. He's, like, making fun of Tash for knowing the word Menagerie. Like, it's, mm-hmm. like, the craziest possible thing for her to know. He's like, was there a library, too? Because there's no way you knew that word before now <laughs> or something like that. And it's just, like, Menagerie's not that... Ob- Maybe it's just because I'm a Star Trek dork, but, like, Menagerie's not a <laughs> super obscure word. And she's, like, 15. Like, right, what? right, exactly. <laughs> and then, like, so they have the droid battle there, and then they have to go back through the menagerie later, and then there's a bunch of beastie animals that are released, and they have to battle those, too. And we did not need the second beastie battle. I agree. Um, but, I agree. but also, but I do, the only thing that I feel like is going in this series, the only thing that we have that's actually, like, evolving in this series is Tash. Like, I feel like right. Tash is becoming stronger with the Force in these series, especially in the last book, not so much this Yeah, book. there's, like, little like she, things around the edges here. But yeah. yeah, she most definitely has a, um, a, 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 a connection to the Force. But the thing in this book is, like, she finds an article on in the library files, you know, there, about this thought that the Jedi, like, um, 
um, what is it? The, the line is like, do, uh, do nothing to do something. What it was, it? Uh, oh, it was, um, yeah, something like that. It was like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it was like it was like Obi Wan's <laughs> philosophy between the trilogies, basically in Last of yeah. the Jedi. Yeah, so it's about it's patience. Like, yeah, by, yeah. yeah, it's like by doing nothing, like you do all sorts of things. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I wish it was that. <laughs> by doing nothing, you do all sorts of things. <laughs> I wish it was that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what being a Jedi is all about. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> oh, so yep, that's. That's it. That's all I got to say about this. Well, you know, like, I had a good time with it. I'm looking forward to next week, which is clones. And then we wrap things up the following week with The Hunger. Um, Ooh, ooh, mm. that reminds me. Doesn't Dash Rendar have a droid sidekick? Yeah, I can't remember the name. I can't remember the name either, but I was thinking, like, when he got to his... When he finally gets to his ship, I'm like... He has a droid sidekick. Where's that droid sidekick at been this whole book? Yeah, so maybe just on the ship. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, next week is clones. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm wondering if it'll try to reference some vague notion of the Clone Wars. Uh, I'm hoping so. We'll, we'll see. And I'll say this is that's uh, clones is a uh, a book that I read as a kid. Oh, uh, wow. I, I, I have no recollection of it, but it has the coolest cover ever. So I'm looking that's, forward that's to it. The cover I'm... is awesome. So and... yeah, that'll be next week, and then we're wrapping up the series and uh, this quick this run. We're gonna take our break after two more episodes, guys. So mm-hmm. um. I actually have a great idea for season three that I want to run by you. Uh, okay, okay. After we and, finish here, but, yeah. And we also, uh, I uh, we recently discovered another book series that we're going to do for this series: yes. the Clone Wars Secret Missions. It's a four-part series. I couldn't believe this existed. I <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe it, of it. Actually, I went on eBay to see where the other copies are because it's a four-part series. Yeah. And friend, uh, uh, our friend Kristen, who's right. not been on the show, she got us some books, and these were the book one and four were in this. I went on eBay. Book one is the only thing on eBay. None of the other books are available on there, so we'll have to uh, find them online. Well, we'll see. But uh, um, but it is an original Clone Wars series. So okay, well we'll, we'll talk about it. We got yeah. We, we there's a few books we're definitely gonna cut. Co- like there's a few additional little things that we're gonna definitely cover next year. Like beyond what we've already talked about, because like there's a couple other little things that I've discovered also. But okay. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, that that's next week. Check us out on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Padawan Library. Email us, padawanlibrary at gmail.com. Sometime during the hiatus, we're doing our Q&A episode. So, uh, yeah. Yep. Until the books are due back. The library is closed. <laughs>